Hi, my name is Jamie Tamarwalki, I'm a Global Account Manager here at Global Communications Group in Inglewood, Colorado. I've been with GCG about a year now and about 16 years in the industry. I'm here today to talk to you about what a PRI is, some of its applications, and actually the breakdown of a PRI. In the United States, we have what's called a T1. That comprises 24 channels. 23 of those channels are used for boys, and the 24th channel is known as the Delta channel. That is to set up calls, take down calls, as well as deliver caller ID, name, and number information. Internationally, we have what's called an E1. It comprises 31 channels. 30 of those channels are the B channels, or beta channels. And the 31st channel is the D channel, otherwise known as the Delta channel. Again, the Delta channel sets up the call, takes down the call, as well as delivers caller ID, name, and number information. To help explain how PRI works, let's take a look at this diagram. If you notice on the diagram, in the top left corner, we have what's called the telephone exchange building. That is also known as the phone company or your carrier. Middle of the page would be your location. To the right of that would indicate your phones as well as the fax machine. In the middle of the page, you'll notice there's a PRI card next inside of your PBX. The purpose of a PRI card is to separate out the voice and data channels. Remember, a PRI can also be used for data applications. The local area network would contain items such as IP phones, Wi-Fi access point, Wi-Fi phone, as well as a soft phone. The next diagram shows a breakdown of what the PRI line is. Again, this is for illustration purposes of what a PRI would look like. You'll notice that there's tubes. 23 of those tubes are for voice channel, pictured above. Those are also known as the B channels. That would contain user voice, data image, and sound. The 24th channel is the D channel, indicated with the tube by itself. That would be for call signaling, setup, user packet data information. That D channel is comprised of 64K. If you look further down the page, you'll notice the diagram indicates a primary rate interface diagram of 23 B channels and one D channel. Again, the B channel would start at channel number one and go through channel number 23. The D channel, which is the 24th channel, would be referenced by itself as a single channel. Again, responsible for setting up call signaling, user packet data, caller ID name, and number. Now I wanted to go into a little bit of the advantages of having an ISDN PRI. The first advantage would be the cost. Most companies today come to us at GCG with individual phone lines. Each individual phone line is charged by the phone company. With a local PRI, ISDN PRI, you can have what's called a circuit charge. What that is is you can put multiple phone lines on one PRI circuit and have a lower cost. Think of it this way. If you were to have 20 phone lines, you would be charged individually for each phone line, as well as any features that you may have on it, such as voicemail, call hunting, caller ID, name and number. With an ISDM PRI, you can convert, converge those costs into a single circuit charge, which in turn will save you money by having a circuit of an ISDM PRI instead of having individual phone lines. Another advantage of the ISDM PRI is the features. Some features that come with an ISDM PRI or that you can add on would be, first would be a DID, direct inward dialing. That would be if you wanted to have an individual phone line assigned to one particular user. You can also have what's called a DOD, direct outward dialing. That would be used for an application of a call center. You also will have caller ID, that will be name and number delivered, as well as call hunting. Within call hunting, you can have both asequential and desequential. Asequential would basically start at the first channel, channel one, go all the way through channel 23, and then back to channel one. This would be a great application if you were to have a call center and multiple users needing to answer the phone when someone calls in. You can also do desequential. Desequential would be is that you start on channel 23 and go backwards up to channel 1. The advantage of that would be if you have users that are sitting in a pool in a call center and they need to answer a phone on a different priority. As you know, an ISTM PRI, as you're learning, an ISTM PRI can be customized to suit your business needs in many ways. Now that I've reviewed with you what an ISDM PRI is, we've reviewed some of the features and benefits of a PRI, I wanted to share with you a diagram that will illustrate a way that we are actually using PRIs today to cut costs for organizations. As you'll see on the diagram, in the left corner we have public internet, in the middle we have carrier network, 
and below we have the phone company or the carrier. To the right of that, you'll notice it says private T1 circuit. To the right would be your locations, which would comprise your PC users, your servers, and also your phone system. With this type of application of PRI, we are migrating or merging internet traffic as well as voice traffic being delivered over a PRI. This is a great benefit to companies such as hospitals, financial firms, schools, manufacturers, and auto dealerships, just to name a few. The advantage is a PRI will provide increased flexibility with the option to assign channels for specific purposes, such as voice, data, or even video. Most PRI circuits also come with SLAs, service level agreements. That ensures service uptime and call quality. We hope that you've enjoyed this overview of ISDM PRI service. If you have additional questions that you need answered, please don't hesitate to call us at Global Communications Group at the number below. Thank you.